Welcome to this episode of Sunny Silver Linings. Sunny's guest today is Kevin Blake, president of ICS. Kevin has led ICS through five successful business acquisitions and serves as the visionary for his company, stating that his biggest weapon is his company culture. He talks about giving your employees a voice being the key to good talent management, investing in your people, empowering your leaders, and the importance of authenticity. And now, your host, the founder and CEO of IT by Design, Mr. Sonny Kayla. Over to you, Sonny. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast. I'm happy to be here, Sonny. I always, I always enjoy spending some time with you. <laughs> I appreciate that, and likewise. And yeah, so I love our conversations over dinner and when we meet at conferences or, you know, build it <laughs> our own yeah. conference. So whenever, uh, whenever we have that opportunity to spend some quality time, I always enjoy our conversations and uh, I'm very excited about sharing your views uh, today uh, with my viewers and uh, I appreciate your time. Great. Happy to do that. Yeah. We're just coming off conference season, right? We started with uh, your uh, fantastic event. So I do got to shout, give that a shout out. So anybody that's on the fence or thinking about whether they should go to build it next year, I mean, it, it was a fantastic conference from content to networking to just the location. Uh, it was great. And then I got to see Akasea and of course IT Nation. So we got to share some meals. And um, so uh, it's, a, it's a fun time of year for our industry to kind of get together and share what you know, what's working, what's not working. So yeah, ha happy to be here and share whatever I can to, to help your viewers. So no, thank you. Thank you. And we appreciate your partnership. And uh, yeah, so we really enjoy uh, working with you and your team. My team, uh, they always talk about ICS and the team that is so pleasant to work uh, with your team. And it's that cultural alignment. It's overall, you know, that cultures that we're creating of winning and learning and making progress. And that's what they, they really, really enjoy. Uh, because in the service delivery business, as you know, uh, they're always learning and progress. And uh, our team do see things that way. And that alignment really makes it uh, uh, very easy for them to work well together. And we appreciate your partnership. Yes, so as, as, as do we. It all starts with people. So, uh, and the culture that we define, I and mean, we'll talk a little bit about that about that today in our in our in our uh, topic that we're gonna we're gonna hit here, but uh, yeah. it all is related. So yeah, yeah, it's a nice segue now to our culture conversation. And uh, so we are here today, and as you might have uh, observed at IT Nation at other conferences where we work together, that uh, talent is always uh, at, you know at the forefront. Uh, in the, during the breakout sessions to main stage discussions, everyone is talking about talent shortage. Uh, talent shortage is real, especially in the tech sector and cybersecurity being uh, very, very demanding out there from the talent perspective. And yeah. on top of that, having that attention uh, in this uh, great resignation era. And we see that, you know, a lot of businesses out there, they're struggling to grow and or one of the major barrier that they see to their growth, even in 2022, is having enough quality talent and just in time hiring to scale their businesses and having that culture that is conducive to uh, the new workplace that, uh, that we are experiencing right now, which is more of hybrid or work, work from anywhere type of situation. So, so let's get into our culture. Uh, what are you doing, Kevin, at ICS from the, I mean, dealing with this new, new workplace that we have? Are you work from uh, home right now? Are you work from office? Can you talk to us a little bit about what ICS is doing in terms of uh, dealing with the workplace culture and the situation that we have because of pandemic? Sure, yeah. So, you know, ICS is a little unique because we're in tertiary markets, right? So uh, we have four locations, soon to be five, or we should close on another acquisition here in about four weeks. Um, and, um, you know, we're not immune to this great uh, <laughs> uh, talent shortage and uh, re uh, resignation that you, that you spoke of, right? So 
um, you know, our, our cost of living in the markets we're in, which is you know upstate New York and then Massachusetts, so like Syracuse and Ithaca and Binghamton and uh, Auburn, Massachusetts. Um, you know, generally those areas historically pre-COVID were a, a lower cost of living. So, you know, we 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 would be able to, you know, our salary range, our, our pay band ranges were were lower than most of the major metro areas in the country. Well, COVID came along and, you know, there's a lot of unknowns there, but that kind of neutralized everything as people, you know, went to this hybrid model, which we did as well, um, you know, and figured out you can hire people anywhere. So uh, we learned pretty quickly that we had to get uh, very strategic about our retention policy and our recruiting policy, right? So it's one thing to bring new candidates in. It's another thing to keep the candidates you have. Uh, I've always, and anytime anybody's ever asked us, um, you know, what, what, what's been some of your secrets to your success? How do you, how'd you get to be the size you are? We're about 150 person MSP um, spread across North, uh, upstate New York and New, uh, New England. Um, and I would always answer, it, it's our people, it's our culture. Um, we have invest heavily in that. Um, you know, I, 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 my personal core values are very closely aligned to our business core values. Right. So family, integrity and team fit is the acronym. Um, they aren't just words. Right. Um, we, we we use those as guiding principles as we make decisions, you know, as we as we try to figure out if we're hiring or promoting or you know, what whatever things in front of us. We always kind of run them through those filters. Yeah. And I think it's important. Uh, our people are our are, are product. Right. So um, and, you know, I care deeply about them and. You know, it, it, and it's gotten the, the good thing about the COVID is, right, we've had more family time and, you know, but the, the not so good thing is you, you don't see your people as much, right? So you, you spend more time with your folks at office than you do at home. And um, it, you, so we had to put some strategy and uh, be a little bit more disciplined around um, forcing those meetings, whether that be an online trivia or, uh, you know, hangouts or, or games, uh, you know, so um because because i think that is the, the you know there's pay right and then you get to when you when you pay somebody a certain salary and they've met most of their needs then the next obvious thing is you know the sense of community and, yeah. and are you a part of something um it, what is the what is the purpose of ics it, it can't just be what says make a lot of money right so nobody nobody wants to follow that uh you know so our, our vision is to make a difference in our employees lives you know, the businesses we serve and the, and the communities we are in. And we back that up with, with you know, financial time, our ICS CARES program. Um, and, and that is how we kind of lead. Um, the things I'm most proud of is, is our charity golf tournament and, and the, the things in our communities that we make an impact. Uh, you know, IT by Design did support our golf tournament. And I thank you for that, Sonny, because that, it made a lot. We were able to give away more than $35,000 to four great charities. Um, so, yeah, so there's, I could go a lot of different directions. I'll pause, let you <laughs> yeah. digest some of that. And uh, I, as you know, I'm pretty passionate uh, about a lot of these topics, so. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I love the way you described and that acronym FIT, uh, family first. And in your core values uh, acronym, uh, family is, <laughs> is the first thing that you mentioned. And yeah, so uh, family, integrity, and team. And Correct. family type of, uh, yeah, so after money, uh, people, uh, people want to feel good about the environment that they work in. As you said, a lot of our hours in a day are spent with family at work. And I'm glad that you are seeing uh, your family at work as just family extension of your family. And you're giving so much importance to people and the purpose before profit that, uh, that I heard you saying in different words that I care about purpose and people before profit, all those uh, things are important uh, for sustainability, but which one is the most important thing, how you lead, uh, it, it is important. So my next question there is, so now your culture is defined. You know exactly what it looks like, what good looks like from a, a kind of someone who is uh, living those values, promoting those values, how are you keeping your culture strong in this new workplace, which is very different than pre-pandemic? Yeah, um, it's 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 two things, right? That are 
providing a challenge to make sure that culture is being uh, infused all the way down through. It's it's a the, the you know what COVID has brought brought on this work from home hybrid environment, um, and B we're growing you know organically and both inorganically. So doing acquisitions and moving into new regions and new offices and um, you know how to be purposeful about you know. Uh, Taking the culture, the core values, the, the mission, the vision that we've set forth, and and getting that infused down into those locations. Um, so we're doing that through a lot of different methods, right? It starts with having the right people in the right leadership roles and investing in leadership, right? So um, we're going to these conferences, we're learning as much as pro- possible. We've invested in leadership training, um, we, you know. So the people we put in those um, leadership roles. Uh, have those core values, right? So that is the first thing I look for. We can train people anything, but if, if, if their leadership style isn't matched up with what our core values is, it just isn't going to work. Um, so we've been intentional about our meeting rhythm, right? So the senior team having the same page meeting weekly and then um, having a next level leaders meeting, which we bring in all the next you know level leaders in the company and kind of uh, communicate from the senior team to them um, to make sure, yeah, where are we missing? Where are we not? Um, we formed through, through COVID, we formed four committees made up of people from every area of the company. Um, you know, like I'll, I'll give you an example, the events committee is one of them. Uh, you know, that was, you know, I, I wanted to make sure I wanted to have the, hear the voice of the, of, the, of the people from all different regions and all different levels of the company. So whether you're a printer tech or a, a UC t- t- technician or, or a project engineer, um, you know, I, we wanted to get as much uh, consensus on what was important to our teams, right? So where should we spending our dollars, right? When it comes to holiday parties, when it comes to, um, you know, fun activities. Um, so, you know, so those events committees, senior leadership team aren't on that purposely. So a next level leader will sit on and kind of moderate those. Um, and and they're, they're, we're getting great feedback back from those and, and people are part of the decision-making here. Um, we did that when we were smaller, but you know, it was more haphazardly. So now we're a little bit, a little bit more purposeful on that um, and letting them have the voice to guide us, right? So um, one of the things we recently did was uh, a four helpful list exercise run by um, the committee, to the uh, recruitment and retention committee, which was made up of people in our organization, right? So tell us, you know, where are we missing? Where should we, what should we do different, you know, uh, more training or more, you know, where we should be communicating differently? And, you know, out of that, we did a four helpful list. They ran it, what's working, what's not, you know, or, you know, what's confusing, um, what, what's wrong. Um, and it, we got back the most invaluable feedback. And we, and we took that feedback, I, ran, I read every single line of it and it was anonymous so that we could get real raw feedback. And I boiled it down into themes. And then I'm, I'm, we're hitting every one of those themes, right? Pay, pay is one of them. You know, but when it, the when communication communication shows up in every area, even when we think we're communicating, you know, we're not right. So because yeah. you have to communicate in so many different methods on so many different platforms in order to hit the the, the, the bulk of the company, we're not perfect. You know, but I'm committed to taking the feedback and improving where where we can. Right. Mm-hmm. So those are important things to actually understand what is what's driving people crazy. Uh, and coming back and through it. So we have a cyber, I'll give you an example, we have a cybersecurity division. You know, in my mind, we know exactly what they're charged to do. You know, but some of the feedback came from other departments are saying, well, you have Integer, this security uh, company that is doing this, you know, high level security. We don't know what they're doing. How about training us and educate us on what they're doing? Didn't even think about it. You know, they're on the phones of customers. So we took that feedback and we developed um, some curriculum from that department that w- it's delivered and started doing uh, monthly webinar series from every, so that people can learn about what's going on in every department. Because when you don't know, like, wait, where, where am I spending my time? You know, where, where's, where's other people in the company? You just, you just it naturally will just make conclusions. So we're trying to be more purposeful around that, uh, getting the feedback and then following up on it. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that. Um, voice of employee is important and uh, what I'm uh, hearing you say is that you have created those structures, those processes uh, using the four helpful list, which is the best way to get that voice of uh, your team members uh, asking those what's working, not working, missing, confusing type of questions. And uh, it's very creative to use that 
to get their voice. Normally we use that just for bigger picture strategy uh, using the strat uh, but I'm glad to hear that you have implemented that to get that voice using focus groups. Uh, so events focus group can fill that out uh, what events are working, what events are not working or missing or confusing, or how yep. we can make a bigger impact using events or where that impact uh, matters because it's the built uh, by or co-created with your team members by using a very consultative, very engaging approach. And that's the only way to really understand what you are doing is resonating well with your people because you're doing it to make an impact on them. And if their voice is considered, they are given the opportunity to co-create those plans with you, then the impact is bigger. And your kind of um, the results that you want to produce, those results can be produced because they are, at the end of the day, is for that customer, uh, which is our internal customer that we're serving. Now, you always talk about, like, you know, uh, we, when we were at IT Nation, even having that dinner, you said, Sunny, people have a lot of options these days, right? So in terms of uh, what the job market is, and people can have many options. They can probably get a lot more money than what we are paying in our companies. And there are, there are certain things that you have built into your strategy where money matters, but it's more meaningful work to a lot of uh, other things that you do to make sure that uh, that other things that people are looking for uh, other than money, uh, you, you are very intentional about building your company culture and company plans by keeping that voice in mind. So can you talk to us a little bit about uh, the bigger picture there? What, what exactly are you focusing on? What are the like, you know, the top few things that you're focusing on to make sure that your employee retention is best in class? Um, one of the biggest one is giving them the voice, right? Okay. The, I'll just touch on the pay thing because you're correct. There is a lot of options out there right now. So one of the things we did was we recognized that. We did a pay ban study in all of our regions. Uh, we did mid-year reviews and we're, putting, we, and we're communicating that we're gonna do two reviews per year. Um, we're going to do job road mapping. We bought a new platform, and we're, we're tracking that with you know it's much more strategic, um, you know, so we can try to address that piece, right? To make sure we're not way out of whack, and we put career roadmaps in front of folks. Um, so that's that's one bucket, right? So there is things you could do to combat that. Um, the second, uh, you know, the where where it, you know, is is giving your the, the voice and understanding really what, what why why having stay interviews. Right, so that's one thing we're starting to implement. Right, so in those reviews, why why do you work here? Why, why are you staying? Every you know, every, are you hearing all these people leaving and just having the open conversation? So, so you know, we can take that feedback and then use that to go to go back and talk to our teams. Right, so that's something new. Um, putting a huge emphasis on trying to build our, our our resources. Right, so we've had a lot of success in taking people that started on the help desk and are now project engineers. Uh, people who started in admin who are now head of HR, stuff like that. Um, so we're going to hire, you know, more uh, junior folks and invest in them and to train. I recognize that some of those will will take the training and move on to another job. And we're going to be committed. It's our, it's our culture to celebrate that. It, if it's going to happen, you know, we just need to be, be building a big enough pipeline um, to keep growing our, our leaders in our company. Um, so that's that's an issue we have we have taken. Um, I, I would say that one of the big things is, is taking our vision, right? That the piece for, you know, uh, you know, we're talking about investing in our communities and being very purposeful about that. Like we have a program called ICS Cares where people get paid to do volunteer work. We don't care what it is. You can dictate it. Um, it could be part of your, your church, part of your the food bank, part of, you know, helping your neighbor. Um, you will get paid. It could be after hours and um, that's an impactful program. You know, our golf tournament this year, we had 40 of our employees, you know, spend the whole day working as volunteers and interacting with the nonprofits and, and our customers and our partners who supported it, uh, our vendors that supported it. Um, those are the things people talk most about. Um, you know, the impromptu, uh, you know, have a drink tonight or, or celebrations, uh, they love those pieces. You know, a lot of times when people leave, 
And we've had people leave, you know, for more money and, you know, but it's they're working out of their homes for someplace, you know, far away. They request, can we come back for the Christmas party? Can we come back to the summer picnic? Can we come to the events? You know, it's, it's, it's hard, but that is the differentiator, in my opinion. I mean, the community we build here, you know, I, I will do anything for our employees. And I, I, I hope that's evident in, you know, kind of how we operate the business right down through all of our leaders. But I'm very um, protective and, you know, I, I take my responsibility to provide for those families very serious. Um, you know, then we, and I try to create a, create a great culture um, that is helping, right? So generally when somebody at work has something going on or a little off, it's never about the work. It's, it's always about something outside of work, whether that's finances or marriage or, you know, some kind of sickness. You know, so I want a culture that is going to take the time to ask those questions and help and provide resources in those areas. And that's what we're trying to build. And I think that's a big differentiator. Yeah, and one thing that I have noticed, you know, said, you know, that external, that, that, that outside, uh, outsider, uh, as a partner working with, with you and your team, uh, Kevin, is that you are very authentic in your approach. And when you are working with your leaders, uh, could be Rob, that we know him uh, uh, closely, and we know that how much you're investing in your leaders in terms of their learning and development and their overall well being. And, you know, he's part of our leadership uh, uh, community of practice. Uh, and uh, so you put your leaders and you take your leaders. You know, I have met two of your leaders with you at IT Nation and they yep. were there with you as, so you take them along with you and you're very genuine, very authentic and you serve them from your heart. And I have seen that personally. And this is one thing that I have observed uh, when I, I mean, I deal with a lot of my partners and I know where leaders uh, invest in their next layer is really in action versus it's more of awareness and their, their, their journey is still there in terms of implementing uh, that learning. But you have, I have seen you taking them to HTG peer groups. I have seen you taking uh, them to these conferences, putting them in these different training programs and very, very genuine about it. So we appreciate uh, leaders where they invest in their culture and other people. So Kevin, I know you, your strategy, uh, you have, while you're having a lot of organic growth, uh, you're also acquiring a lot of other MSPs. And uh, I'm sure that you have very ambitious uh, 2022 plan in terms of uh, your MNA, and you have already accompl uh, accomplished a lot and very successfully integrated those companies. So can you talk to me about impact on culture, uh, you know, MNA's impact on your, on your culture, or, or what's your approach to make sure that that people side of that uh, company that you're acquiring is integrated? That's one question. But before you answer that, if I'm, if I'm an, uh, you know, MSP looking for strategic partners like ICS, what do I need to know about your culture so that I can do that little bit of, uh, uh, kind of, you know, that that uh, thinking that am I the right culture alignment for ICS? Um, so, yeah, as we're doing our executing our M&A or you know, organic growth strategy, um, you know, culture is a huge piece of it. Um, we I, right now, there's there's a ton of activity happening in terms of M&A in our industry, yeah. right? Lots of consolidation. So I'm looking at one to two companies a week at, at least. Um, you know, we're, we are we closed on two last year. Uh, we'll have another one we should close on in about four weeks. And we have an LOI submitted out to another one. Um, some of the things we, we look for is, um, you know, cultures that are closely aligned. And it, it's really hard to detect that, you know, when you send your high level data requests and you ask for your, you know, three years history on spreadsheet stuff and this and that. So. I want to drive, I always drive uh, to get face-to-face -face with the, the owner, right? Whether they're staying on or not and to understand, you know, how they tick, you know, what, you know, I want to know what they do, um, what are their hobbies, you know, what's important to them. Um, Cause it's gotta be a win-win, right? So um, there's no cookie cutter approach in, in our, our strategy for m and We're looking for good companies, you know, with strong cultures that, um, you know, like in our, in our company, when I look at an org chart, I view myself as the bottom, right? So it's servant leadership. I, I'm working for the last guy on, you know, in the company. And if that's not the case, it doesn't work. 
Um, so we've had, I've looked at deals that look great from a financial aspect, right? Check the box as far as reoccurring revenue, kind of customer concentration. And then you get on the phone and, you know, and the, the tone and how they, 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 they think about their employees and employee retention is, is uh, something that I, I may, I have, I have said, <laughs> I don't think I can work with this culture. Uh, now there's no perfect culture. There's no perfect yeah. alignment of cultures. So it's just a matter of having people that are open to it and that care about people. Um, we believe in, in full integrating companies. So as we're buying companies, we're, we're integrating. So the, the, the last, I mean, every m and we've done to date, I personally go out on site, you know, the day we, we close and we inform the, the staff, like the, the last big one we did was uh, Acuity in, in Auburn, Massachusetts. They had about 50 employees. I met with every single employee. I wanted, I wanted them to hear from me. Um, it was a long week. I mean, I, I remember going back to my hotel every night and uh, my voice was sore and, you know, I had conversations and took notes and, you know, I wanted them to hear from me, my personal core values, the company's core values, my personal vision, you know, the mission of the company. And I wanted to hear from them, you know, kind of, you know, give me their history, how long they've been with the company, you know, what's important to them, what, what, what things are bothering them, uh, what do you like to do outside of work, uh, give me that history. And, and I'd like to sit there and, and understand that so we can use that, you know, to, you know, the, the, hey, they're going to, they're going to say, they really care and, and we do right so one of the things i'm most proud about is that acuity integration i think there's seven employees there that now that have enterprise-wide jobs so by having those conversations and knowing where they wanted to go career path we were able to move some of those folks into bigger roles as we're growing um you know talent is you know you can sit anywhere now so we're one company right so we're one family yeah. um so that that's kind of how we tick and that's an example of you know, trying to, to uh, preach the culture into um, a, a new organization joining your company because it's not easy to mesh cultures. So, um, so we have a real hands-on approach where, you know, we're, we sit on site and, you know, we, we communicate down through and uh, yes, the, our process and procedures and, you know, kind of go-to-market strategies are, are the way we're going to do business. We're open to hear if you think you have a better way, but uh, it's more important that we're all people at the end of the day, and we all need to understand, you know, how to work together, right? So, but personality, we do the personality type in that same week, first week, you know, we use the Dr. Larry Little's animals, and we give beanie babies out, and, you know, it's a great icebreaker, so. Yeah, yeah. I think it makes things easier, Kevin, when, uh, so from the seller's point of view, uh, normally, right, so majority of the people that I see, they want their people to be taken care of when they sell, right, because especially their legacy leaders, their uh, people where they have paid their dues and a lot of contributions to the success of that business. So normally you see that owner wants his people to be taken care of. And it's such a, you know, the, 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 you know, you get peace of mind when you see that the, the buyer cares about people. So when I heard you say uh, your core values uh, that F, uh, FIT fit, and that is, and you, you, you kind of talk about people first and purpose first. And I think that is uh, so wonderful to hear for someone who is selling that their people, their overall org organization, their clients are going to be taken care of. And my question there is that, uh, like, do you look at uh, attrition to, I mean, employee attrition, uh, attrition to other things like, you know, or the legacy leaders uh, overall from how long they are with, with that business? Do you look at people health side of things? And if you do, what are the things that you care about? Uh, well, yes, we do look at it's one of our data points we collect is an employee, a historical employee attrition, uh, retention, you know, so we can understand kind of the business that does tell a lot of story around the culture too. If they have a really high attrition rate, you know, generally there's something going on there. So, so we do, we do look at that. Um, it's, it's for, for me, the, when you talk about health of an employee, you know, so we have, I would like to say we have a solution to address everything, right? So we've had business coaches, uh, there are life coaches that we've used um, when we've had employees struggling with different things, right? So whether that be anxiety, um, you know, or, or, or depression, um, we have resources that we will pay for to help 
an employee try to you know better themselves very confidentially. So it's hard during the M and A process to address to, to get that to get that level of information out from the people that are joining your team. But I like to believe we have the culture built uh, and the leaders in place to ask the questions to find out what the what, what really is going on with an employee. If an employee is not hitting you know their full utilization or you know there, there's something going on there. There's always something going on outside of work, and that is really important to have a culture to to ask the questions and and try to line up some resource to help that individual. Yeah. Um, so, and also talk to me a little bit about, you know, like, are you looking for companies everywhere in the U.S. or you're looking for MSPs in a certain region? And what is, what is your 2022 plan uh, in terms of how many MSPs you want to acquire? Uh, so any information that you can share that if there is uh, someone um, uh, interested in talking to you, they know what your like bigger picture vision is there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so when when I, I sat in the MSP's shoes, right? So I owned ICS and you know did the private equity deal, you know, and you know that the, it was scary, right? So I, I know exactly the seat they're in when they're contemplating, you know, either taking some chips off the table or or selling and, and retiring. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of different options. Um, we're open to any of them, right? So um, I, I want to understand what's what that's important to the owner that wants to sell. Um, and then, you know, provide a win-win, right? That, that's, how, that's how this thing works. Um, we started out with a strategy of um, doing a, a regional MSP, right? So I, I believed in, in buying uh, businesses that were in concentric circles around one of our office and growing our footprint where senior leadership could drive to an office every day. Um, that was two years ago. Since then, you know, we've kind of opened that up and we're, we're you know, one of the LOIs we submitted was in the Midwest and I got another one out on the West Coast. Um, the world is shrinking fast, um, and we're, we're getting a lot of opportunity. We've, we've landed some customers organically that have offices across the country. So uh, we kind of uh, we kind of changed our strategy a little bit and said, you know, we'll look at companies anywhere in the country as long as they meet the criteria we're looking at, looking for, right? So um, it's it's the right fit, right? So there's a lot of companies we look at and we we pass on for one reason or another, but. Uh, we're generally looking for you know traditional SMB managed service providers uh, that have a you know a high concentrate of a recurring revenue. Um, they don't have too high of a customer uh, concentration issue. Um, that that have a decent um, uh, retention rate with their clients and their employees, um, and then it's got a fit, right? So uh, we're not looking to go in and replace people, and you know we want it, people are the key to this thing. I'm looking to walk alongside those folks and. Um, you know, to help everybody hit hit their max, right? Put put plans in front of them to motivate uh, you know the the people we're bringing into our fold um, to be able to do better. I mean, that's really like the key, both professionally and personally. So, uh, and so now I have fireside questions, and we're gonna I'm gonna put you on on, on the spot here, Kevin. I'm gonna be different persona now for a while, uh, starting with your employees, starting with uh, your potential candidate. Uh, who wants to work at ICS and then a potential MSP owner candidate who wants to probably talk about strategic partnership with you. And okay, so let's start with me being the employee for ICS. And my, so, so what I'm looking for here is that, you know, one, two, three things uh, in terms of ICS, uh, ICS uh, uh, why? and ICS. So let's start with my first question as an employee of ICS. Why should I stay at uh, I, uh, ICS? One, two, three words. Why should I stay at ICS? We, we care about you. Okay, that's awesome. Now, uh, let me uh, be that, that uh, persona where I, I'm interested in uh, working for ICS. Uh, could be in a leadership position, could be an uh, engineering position. Why should I apply and why should I, uh, I have many different options and why ICS should be my choice to work? I could say the same thing. We, we, we will care about you, but um, our culture, our core values differentiate us from your other options. Awesome. And now uh, I'm the, at that MSP owner persona, 
And while there's just so much happening in the MA world, and I get probably 10 emails every day that uh, give me your MSP, give me your <laughs> MSP, I'm interested in talking to you. Why should I talk to Kevin at ICS? I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to form a win win partnership. So, your employees, the people that have got you to this point where you can have this conversation. Uh, and your legacy, I'm going to try to check as many of those boxes as possible. Awesome. Now, I'm going to be that employee of that MSP. Yes, my MSP leader, my own MSP owner, uh, they, they are having that conversation with Kevin. And now they're asking me, Sunny, what's your opinion here? We have ICS to work with and we have other, a lot of other options. Now, I'm the employee of that MSP who is interested in selling to ICS. What, what's your message for me? Um, please look at the other six companies we've purchased and talk to some of the folks that worked for those companies and ask them their experience. I have a proven track record of, of, uh, of understanding what's important to you and, and putting a platform in place to achieve that. Awesome. So Kevin, uh, if, if I ask you to define Kevin in three words as a human being, what comes to your mind? Ooh, three words. So family, um, um, and then authenticity, and um, passion. I would say passion. So they can kind of sum those, I can sum those up. I can give you, you know, family yeah. is my personal core values and the company core values. You know, it's, it comes down to, you know, what's important to me. Uh, you know, uh, it's what drives me, right? So whether it's my my actual family or my work family, right? So we make decisions that aren't just about money, but about what's the best for the people in your family. Um, and then authenticity, you know, it's that servant leadership, right? So it's driven from my faith, right? So it's, it's uh, I, I am who I am. I'm not trying to be somebody I'm not. Yeah. Um, I try to find and work with people that are uh, wired that way. Um, you know, because I, I believe the more authentic you are, the more real and honest you are, and you know, there's no barriers. So authenticity, I think you'll find working with me, I generally will, will do exactly as I uh, say, right? So I, 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 I follow up on what I say. And then passion, um, you know, I'm, I'm passionate. I don't do things unless I'm passionate about it. <laughs> it, it my personality is uh, almost obsessive when it comes to when I commit to doing something, I follow through on it because I'm passionate about it, right? So I set goals around everything I do whether it's something personal or it's in the business, you know, um, we have our, our yearly goals, our quarterly goals, you know, right down to our weekly goals. I have my BHAG, right. My big hairy audacious goal that I strive to, to strive towards. Um, and I generally have results because I'm so passionate about if I, if I pick something that's important enough to write down to go achieve, uh, you know, whether that be um, purchasing a business in a different region and, you know, having a win-win and, and all the people involved, I generally achieve those because I, I'm passionate about it and my and that passion drives my actions to achieve those goals. So, so FAP, uh, family, <laughs> authentic, authenticity and uh, passion. So yeah, yeah. yeah that, uh, that's so awesome. So, and that is, uh, that's what I see. Uh, you know, uh, we know each other for many, many years now and uh, my team sees that as well. Because you know the I is the, the not too many people out there where they can uh, walk that talk, and uh, I see that whatever you say, uh, you have you have that action behind that. And as an example, I know for sure because uh, as a NOC team for ICS, we see the growth. Uh, the overall, your commitment to that uh, growth that you had this year, you have overachieved this year. Uh, you know, so you have, uh, you are ahead of your overall uh, vision uh, for growth in terms of uh, how much you wanted to grow by now and what your growth is already, you have overachieved that. So I see that. And that's, this is an example of someone who is so passionate about results and team and people. And we appreciate that. And uh, it's always a pleasure, uh, Kevin, uh, talking to you, having a conversation. And I truly, truly appreciate you coming and sharing your thoughts with the rest of the world. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, Sunny. I also appreciate you know, our friendship and our partnership. 
Um, a lot of the characteristics we just talked about, I know that you share because I've, I've seen and lived examples of you and your team and executing out through them. So uh, it's been a great partnership and looking forward to continuing to grow together. So thank you, Kevin.